there and welcome back to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Angie and I am a chemist who loves makeup. Today I'm going to be sharing my opinion on the warning that the FDA issued stating not to use three different items from Claire's that they found to be contaminated with asbestos. And I'll also be sharing my opinion on Claire's response that they issued on Twitter to this warning. Back, I want to say in 2017, I remember seeing some articles stating that somebody sent out this Claire's makeup for testing and they found it to be tested positive for asbestos and then that's when the FDA got involved. So the FDA had testing conducted on behalf of them of these products that were thought to be contaminated with asbestos and they tested positive for tremolite asbestos because talc which is in these products can be in close proximity with asbestos. If the mining sites are not selected carefully and measures are not taken to ensure that A, the talc is free from asbestos or to purify it so it is free from asbestos. And now Claire's is saying that the FDA is wrong. I'm gonna leave you their little message right here. Feel free to pause and read the whole thing if you would like. And that the fibers that the FDA is identifying as asbestos aren't actually asbestos fibers and that they've talked extensively with the FDA and the FDA is not budging, that their products are safe but out of caution, they are going to take all talc products off of their shelves and they are gonna be accepting any returns of their talc-based products. My opinion is, is that I think that because Claire's is going bankrupt, they filed for bankruptcy, that they don't wanna have something like a recall, which is gonna cost them more money, even though there's a very low likelihood that this testing that was conducted yielded a false positive for asbestos. So let's talk about that. They said that the FDA is misidentifying fibers as asbestos and that these are meeting the criteria of USP and EPA testing and that the FDA is contradicting these tests. So specifically, we're gonna talk about the USP. So USP stands for United States Pharmacopeia. So this basically has a bunch of testing methods for a bunch of different ingredients. This is targeted towards pharmaceuticals, but you can have things that are USP grade and un other industries can use them. So these methods are generally recognized across multiple industries for their testing. If you go to like a drugstore and you see like glycerin with the USP, any ingredient, anything that you see at the drugstore that says USP grade, that means that it fits the criteria on these USP testing methods, that it meets all of the requirements for this testing. And the USP is an independent organization that creates all these standards, but they are not the ones that enforce these standards. And in my opinion, the FDA does tend to stick to the USP as what they consider standard. I don't really see them looking outside of the USP if there's already developed methods in the USP. So talc has what is referred to as a monograph and this basically lists all the testing requirements and their limits and that kind of thing. And asbestos testing is one of the requirements. And I got a lot of this information off the USP website about talc, so I will link that down below. And this monograph states how to go about testing for asbestos. So there are two methods that can be used. One is infrared spectroscopy, and the other is x-ray diffraction. Either of these two tests are selected first to be conducted. You can use either of these methods, and if that fails, you will go on to another method, which is optical mic microscopy. I feel like I had a really hard time pronouncing that word. That's like one of those words that I like, I can't visualize like how to pronounce it. And this, this method is used to confirm that there is a presence of asbestos. According to this USP article, there is a possibility for a false positive due to this second testing. With this optical microscopy, it is hard to identify and they are working on improving this. They even have like a talc expert panel to try to improve these methods. I remember I read a paper about some of these methods that were developed and it was from like 1974. So they've been using this method for a while now. So there is a chance that these fibers could have been misidentified, but it is possible from the other side that the people supplying to Claire's makeup could be getting false negatives with one of the first two methods because that was also something the USP stated is that you could get negative results in the first two methods and then you wouldn't even check the second method because you already got a negative result. In my opinion, I'm sure these tests got conducted multiple times by the FDA, probably in like multiples of like multiple samples out of the same batch or lot. And 
probably multiple times, if not at multiple places. I don't know if they've tested at multiple places. Claire said that they had multiple accredited laboratories that tested. FDA is not budging. They continued to issue their warning because Claire's would not voluntarily recall the product. And since the FDA cannot recall the cosmetics themselves, they can do it with food and drug. They can't forcibly recall cosmetic products. They issue out a warning, which at this point is like pretty much sufficient. Everybody sees it. In my opinion, I think the FDA did follow through with this because the information and evidence that Claire's provided was not enough. If they were able to show from their vendor or from their manufacturer, these tests that, these tests that were conducted, if they could prove those fibers or something else, then that should be sufficient enough. They probably didn't provide enough or I feel that the FDA wouldn't have followed through. But that, again, this is just my opinion. You know, you I would love to hear what you guys think about this down below. And also with Claire's, I don't know how big their makeup sector is, like at their stores since it's like, feel like 90% like accessories from what I can see. They probably don't have like a team of like scientists on hand if they have any at all because they are going bankrupt, you know, they got to cut where they will. If they were to recall this product, not like where they accept returns, just to say you accept returns like isn't a recall, issuing a statement on Twitter isn't a recall. There's a lot of steps you have to take for recalls to notify people about this. That's a very expensive thing that they probably don't want to deal with, which is probably why they were fighting this so hard. And at the end of the day, this just makes Claire's look really bad because they didn't recall it. We saw with Benefit when they had their gimme brow, they recalled it themselves. It was voluntary, but realistically, if Benefit didn't voluntarily recall it and the FDA had to issue out a warning letter like this, it makes it look like you cannot trust that company because they didn't act on this. Recalls happen all the time, but if you have to have the FDA come in and put out a warning for people not to use your products because you didn't want to recall it, that just gives me a really icky feeling about Claire's. If you have children who want makeup, go get like e.l.f. or get Wet n Wild. It's inexpensive, they can play with it, and it's really not bad makeup. I'm very disappointed in them because this is makeup targeted for children and maybe we don't care about like how good it is per se because it is for children but it should still be safe and not contaminated with things. I would love to hear your opinion on this down below so leave that and give this video a like if you like talking about beauty news stories like this and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you'll always know when I upload a new video. With that I'll see you next time. Bye!